Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Help promote and link up my channel. Normally, I do movie reviews on my other channel. This will be a non-spoiler review for this Suicide Squad movie. It's written and directed by James Gunn. With returning characters, actors reprising their roles. Margaret Robbie as Harley Quinn. Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang. Joel Kinnelman uh, as Rick Flagg. Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. All these characters reprising and returning for the sequel that is... But isn't. It's also starring Starro! And Idris Elba, John Cena, Michael Rooker, Nathan Fillon, Shane Gunn, Sean Gunn, somebody's penis, and Blink and you'll miss them! Is this actually going to be an entertaining film that isn't a woke lecture? Let's talk about the positives. The good on this one, this is a hard R from the bloody violence to the random dick intense to the language in it. It's great to see them not play it safe with a superhero movie. This is kind of more in style with like the boys. But you gotta hand it to James Gunn and Warner Brothers on this one. This film is a large ensemble cast to mostly expendable bottom tier DC characters and their depiction of said characters lives up to the name. All of these characters are career criminals, low life bottom feeders, scum of the earth, and the movie at times can make you feel bad for some of them, whether it's their current situation, they've been forced into, for instance, Michael Rooker, Savant, or the things they've gone through, Polka Dot Man. There are characters so bad at being bad that they are laughable and, and downright stupid. So hilarious. It's like DC Comics is poking fun out of themselves with characters like TDK. And, and in this case, it, it is pretty amusing to see like Amanda Wall Waller's people betting on who's gonna live or die doing that in the movie that's absolutely hilarious and very self-aware of James Gunn. One of the best things about this movie though in comparison to like the 2016 Suicide Squad movie it never forgets that our lead characters are actually bad guys, psychos. You've got Idris Elba, John Cena having a competitive who can kill the most pissing contest both of which have a similar si skill set so it just makes it that much more worth it. And there are times when they kill people they shouldn't have. King Shark trying to eat people that are on his own damn team Pe trying to eat people he shouldn't polka dot man only finding it easy to kill people if he pictures them as his mother harley quinn margaret robbie was more likable in this than she has been for me in all these other films uh, this, she really shined in this one to me. And her costume just looks so much awesome from the start. They gave her the darker color palette, the black and red. It, it, it was awesome to see her in that getup. She can be very sweet, very nice, very kind, and, and completely loonish. Abruptly kill people on the spot. I really enjoyed the characterization. It managed to do something distinctively different with each character though some don't last as long as others and there is an absolutely outstanding combination of practical effects and CGI on site sets visually this film is unique uh, it has a decent soundtrack really nice bonding moments between characters but it never forgets who they are it goes from lighthearted cutesy adorable stuff with Bratcatcher 2's rat, Sebastian, if I remember right, his name is, and King Shark behaving like a toddler, to hardcore ultra violence with Peacekeeper and Bloodspore, and even a menacing creepy factor with Starro coming in. It hits some minor emotional beats. I love seeing Idris Elba talk shit to his daughter. Love seeing Captain Boomerang actually killing. Loved seeing Rick Flagg having 
importance in Amanda Waller being a cold-hearted bitch. But there are some bad things about this film. It's not a complete joy to watch. All the bad on this, there are a lot of jokes that just don't land. James Gunn has a really wacky sense of humor. Um, yeah, we don't really need to see penises. That's a wh why that was necessary. Why James Gunn felt that was necessary. <laughs> Rick Flagg, Amanda Waller, and Captain Boomerang are the characters I think of when I think of the source material because they're so mainstay. So there are certain things in this movie I'm absolutely not fond of. Story-wise, while much better than 2016 Suicide Squad, that film was a complete disaster. I did not like it whatsoever. It, this one hits a lot of the same beats. A marksman with a daughter being roped into this thing. It feels like been there, done that. The way the film is structured, too, with assembling the team and going on the mission feels like very rinse and repeat. Like, you could make a Suicide Squad anthology film, separate short stories just showcasing how fast and how often these missions go wrong, because this movie assembles a team, and it pretty much does the same thing very quickly again just uh, just walking you through the like the same process practically so this movie isn't exactly a sequel more of a soft reboot but it could still be considered a straight up sequel but it's not supposed to be a straight up sequel it's a little bit confusing especially when you have titles like the suicide squad and suicide squad and that's supposed to be a big big difference the biggest selling point of Suicide Squad is nobody is safe. But of course, some people are. But to really drive home to the audience that nobody is safe means killing somebody from the first movie to really sell it. And the sooner you do that, the more convincing it is. Is James Gunn like to brag about how nobody is safe. Absolutely nobody. So... It is unfortunate and predictable who has to go in this popularity contest in regards to how they rank, what their uh, kind of role is. It, it's predictable. Like So many characters are introduced and immediately taken out to the point that it feels like a cop-out because you're not given a chance to know them on a personal level and... That just makes certain deaths feel really empty. Certain character deaths feel really empty. To top that off, you're not left with very many characters for the rest of the movie. And it makes it feel like you just know they're going to be safe until the third act. And that's really disappointing. It really does feel like a cop-out. One of the negatives, uh, there's all, uh, not really a single consistent villain for the majority of the film. Just the goal, an objective, and it can be underwhelming in that perspective. While James Gunn, uh, this film's really stylized, visually looks great, uh, has all kinds of great things about it, practical effects. Uh, it can be really silly, over-the-top, cartoonish some of the stylized moments just seem like they're going a bit too far with the Harley Quinn bits the the flowers uh, some of it can feel like it, it's going a bit too far a bit too out there Harley Quinn has an incredibly OP moment a really overpowered overqualified moment hard to say this without spoilers basically somebody ends up captured whereas everybody else is executed and this exact same character finds themselves in the exact same boat a second time around, getting captured without being executed. Would give it a 7 out of 10. It's got a lot of action, got a lot of comedy, got a lot of stuff going for it. It doesn't look bad, it's very stylized, looks 
pretty visually unique, has its own distinctive signature and style, and James Gunn's personality is as zany and wacky and bonkers as Harley Quinn and all these other weird ass characters. So it's pretty all around good. I, I mean, the only complaints I really have is the way certain characters are, are pretty much in here just just to die for the sake of like oh anybody could die at any moment nobody's safe most of these characters exist just to die and it, it it's a gimmick it doesn't really feel earned now all these characters dying the way they do it doesn't really feel earned you had like you didn't get the audience too attached to these characters in the first place to to put that on, on all of your posters. Don't get too attached and I just didn't like what happened to certain characters. Like, subscribe, comment, let me know your thoughts, your opinion. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Either way, I'm good with you. I don't know why some people are like, oh, you like a movie? I don't like? You're a monster. Or you like a movie that I hate? You gotta die. Well, just uh, where people get this behavior from beyond me. Like, subscribe, comment, help me get to the 10,000 mark by the end of the year. Greatly appreciate it. Stay awesome. Rock on.